All right, guys, so uh, many of you have seen the video that I made um, that I posted on Vimeo, and due to the overwhelming response, which has been so encouraging and just confirming to me, uh, I wanted to follow up with a video regarding some things that the Lord has shown me. Um, I believe that we are um, in the last few moments of uh, human history. Uh, I believe that um, Jesus is coming soon uh, and that we, his people, need to prepare ourselves. Uh, Today is uh, uh, Tuesday, April 14th. We just have two more days of Passover, uh, two more days of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. But I think the urgency for me right now is the fact that we only have about two more days left of Passover. And I really feel like there's something in, um, I want people to see this before the time of Passover is over because things are shifting very quickly. And I believe that this is God's appointed time for cleansing ourselves, for ridding ourselves of the leaven, okay? The leaven, sin, okay? Cleansing ourselves from sin in preparation for what the Lord is going to do, for what the Lord wants to do, for the times that are going to come upon us, okay? And so uh, there's a number of things that I'm going to try to get through very quickly. Uh, so try to stick with, with me. Um, Luke chapter 12. Uh, verse 54, he also said to the multitudes, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you say at once, a shower is coming. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? Okay? And so I don't have a direct word of the Lord on, you know, whether or not we're going to be here when these things get crazy, all right? There's a lot of, you know, people got the pre-trib, post-trib, rapture, all of that. I'm not gonna get into that. All that I know is that I believe that we are living in the last few minutes of the last hour and that Jesus is coming soon. And I believe that this anointed, appointed time that we're in right now, this appointed feast of unleavened bread, which we are to keep through all generations, okay, we know that it was a foreshadow, but the substance belongs to Christ, okay? So we're not condemned if we're not keeping this feast. But I do believe there is something in keeping with the feast. Even Gentiles, okay? Paul ran into the Corinthians. He said, let us keep the festival, okay? But not with the old lump, not with the old leaven. We are a new lump in Christ, a new creation, okay? But we're to cleanse ourselves from the sin, the impurity, all right? That's the purpose of having this statute, this ordinance forever. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall obser observe it as an ordinance forever. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day, you shall put away leaven out of your houses. For if anyone eats what is leavened from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. Okay? On the first day you shall hold a holy assembly, and on the seventh day a holy assembly. No work shall be done on those days, but what everyone must eat, that only shall be prepared. You shall observe a feast of unleavened bread, for on this very day I brought your hosts out of the land of Egypt. Therefore you shall observe this day throughout your generations as an ordinance forever. Alright? Later on, verse 26. He says, and when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service? You shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. For he passed over the houses of the people of Israel in Egypt when he slew the Egyptians, but spared our houses. All right. This is a time to cleanse ourselves from whatever is hindering wholehearted obedience to Jesus Christ. All right, when we hear that a plague is coming on the land, all right, when we hear that devastation, that the Lord is going to make the earth desolate, when we hear that the Lord is bringing fire to judge the earth, this is not a time to be fearful, all right? I got another scripture for you. But this is not a time to be fearful. This is a time to lift our heads. This is a time to prepare our hearts for the coming of the Lord, okay? This is a time to cleanse ourselves, all right? of whatever may be hindering wholehearted obedience and devotion to Jesus Christ. All right, we should be hastening the day of the Lord. This, should, this is not a time to be afraid. This is not a time to tremble in fear. 
This is a time to lift our heads and look upon the one whom our soul loves and get oil from him for the night is coming. Okay? Chapter 12, uh, Luke. He says a lot in here. I suggest that you guys read this. But later on he says, Let your loins be girded. If I could make one reference, one more, re one quick reference, if I go back to Exodus 12. This is important. He, uh, Exodus chapter 12, verse 11. In this manner you shall eat it, the Passover meal, the lamb. All right? In this manner you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. To Luke chapter 12, verse 35. Let your loins be girded and your lamps burning. And be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the marriage feast so that they may open to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will gird himself and have them sit at table and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them so, blessed are those servants. But also know this, that if the householder had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would have been awake and would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. I want to fast forward to Luke chapter 21 verse 10. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and pestilence. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this they will lay their hands on you and persecute you. Delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. And you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be a time for you to bear testimony. Settle it, therefore, in your minds, not to meditate beforehand how to answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and kinsmen and friends, and some of you they will put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head will perish. Hallelujah. New bodies, brothers and sisters, we're going to be resurrected. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay, with new bodies that will never perish. By your endurance, you will gain your lives. This is a time for endurance, my friends. We need endurance. We need oil. The night is coming. Okay? The bridegroom is coming. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are inside the city depart, and let not those who are out in the country enter the city of Jerusalem. For these are days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. Alas for those who are with child and for those who give suck in those days. For great distress shall come upon the earth and wrath upon this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among all the nations. And Jerusalem will be trodden down by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs and sun and moon and stars and upon the earth distress of nations and perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves, men fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken and then they will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to take place, look up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. I'm skipping a few verses, but take heed to yourself, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a snare, for it will come upon all who dwell upon the face of the earth. But watch at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. We need strength and we need to pray 
that the Lord would equip us to stand before the Son of Man, before Jesus Christ. We need to live lives filled with the Holy Spirit. Now is not a time to be shrinking back. We need to be praying for strength and for grace and endurance to stand before Him when we see Him and to not shrink back in fear, okay? This time of quarantine, this time of uh, unle unleavened bread, this feast unto the Lord, which is to be kept forever, is a time to seek the Lord. It's a time to get fresh oil, the presence of God. It's the presence of Jesus Christ and His people that is going to equip us and enable us to stand in this hour of testing that is going to come upon the whole earth. Jesus is coming soon. There's so many things, so many things that I want to talk about. And that I believe that I am going to talk about. But everything in due time. I think that things are going to unravel very quickly before our very eyes. Even in the next few days. But definitely within the next few months. The secret powers of lawlessness of Antichrist are already at work. Jesus. I wanted to follow up the video that I sent out to everybody and I wanted to follow up with this video that now is not a time to shrink back in fear. Now is not a time to be drunk with the things of this world, the entertainment of this world, binge watching on Netflix and you know whatever else is going on in your lives right now that is causing you to be asleep, that is causing you to miss out on intimacy with Jesus Christ, being consecrated to Him, living lives of holiness and godliness. Okay, that day is going to creep upon us, friends. Don't let it be so. We're not children of the darkness that that day should creep up on us. But if we're living in darkness, okay, if we're living in dissipation, if we're living in drunkenness, if we're asleep in an hour when we ought to be awake, okay, it's trouble. It's trouble because we're going to get caught off guard. I want to share a vision. Uh, it may have been a dream that my sister-in-law had. I'm going to um, weave it into this video. So in light of everything going on on Saturday while at my mom's house, I really felt like I was supposed to go back to this journal entry from November 1st, 2019. I woke up with this like really heavily on my heart and I felt the Lord saying, the beast will rise up onto this land. And as I'm writing this, I see a beast who is held captive in his or her spirit. He or she does not blink, eyes red. The veins in he and she's neck is popping out. It doesn't move. It speaks in the tongue of the Lord. It isn't from the Lord. Its spirit is held captive. It's blind. And in its blindness, the eyes gaze into the heavens. It will not waver unto death. It will only get stronger. Many people are running from it. There is an explosion. The great city turns to darkness. There will be famine and death, and all those who seek will not find. The beast almost looks like me, and then I felt the Lord say, it will, and it will mirror you and all of your brothers and your sisters. And then I really just felt the Lord saying at that time too, like after meditating upon all that, because that's pretty intense, it was like, I felt like he said, there will be a great fire soon, daughter, and all those who are in mind will dwell in its midst. Amen. Yes. There's so much in that. There's so much in that. And she just told me that dream a few days ago, but she had it in November of 2019. But without even talking to her, these last few days, the Lord has been showing me the exact same things and through many other people too, not just me. There's so much in that dream. But particularly, what we need to know is this. And I, this is what I believe. I believe with my whole heart that we are in the last few minutes of human history. That the beast is already here. That the Antichrist is already here. That the false prophet is already here. And that all of these things are going to be revealed very soon. The man of lawlessness. lawlessness. Very soon, brothers and sisters. Okay, and time will tell, but I hope that you will not need to see it to believe it. I hope that you will take this time to go and lock yourselves away in your prayer closet and let God reveal some things to you. I pray that you will let God reveal what you need to know because you might not need to know all of that. You might just need to know that you need oil. You might just need to know that you need to recalibrate yourself to the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Okay? Remember your first love and from where you've fallen. I don't, you know, you don't, you may not need to get into all the, of the details about how things are unfolding. But what we all, what the church needs to do, 
is to be in the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes. To be found by him without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Okay? I do want to break down some of the things that were in that dream that she had. Because I believe that they are the exact same things that the Lord was showing me. But 2 Peter chapter 3. Go and read it. Therefore, beloved, since you wait for these, be zealous to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. Without spot or blemish and at peace. And I believe that this is in accordance with this feast of unleavened bread, of cleansing the house from leaven, removing leaven from the house. Let us remove anything that is hindering our consecration, renewed zeal for the Lord, for His house, for His work, for His promises, and be at peace. Settle whatever is going on between you and brothers or you and sisters. Settle it. Let it come to an end. This is a feast. This is a, uh, a time of consecration unto the Lord, unto His name. Okay, about this dream that she had. The beast is going to rise up. He's going to look like you. He's going to sound like you. He's going to have the tongue of the saints, all right? Listen, these are times that call for wisdom, that call for understanding, all right? This is the Antichrist. This is a time where many will be led astray, even the elect, if possible. I don't believe we're in danger of being led astray by this. However, I do believe that many who are not rooted in Christ, who do not have the Spirit of Christ, who may seem to be believers, are going to be led astray. I also believe that many who are right now in quarantine, I believe that there's a weeding that is happening right now. There's a sifting that is happening right now and it's coming in layers until this man of lawlessness is revealed. But right now, as we're quarantining, certain peoples who have been churchgoers and who have been so-called Christians are all of a sudden, they're buckling underneath the system. They're yielding themselves to the system instead of being fervent in prayer unto God and being connected with Him, they are yielding themselves to the system that is, which is telling them what to do and how to think. This is not so with the people of God. Alright? We shall be we shall shine like stars in this time. We shall be aglow with the Spirit during this time. We shall make many wise uh, understand during this time, but the wicked will not understand. About this vision, there's a great fire coming upon the earth is what she felt like. That fire is the fire which is preserved for the last days. The former, 2 Peter chapter 3, was de destroyed by water. This one, reserved for fire. Alright? He's going to have the tongue of the saints. This is the Antichrist. 666. And I believe what the Lord showed me about that is that 666, this is this illusion of synchronicity. This is this, is this illusion all the time, since forever, Antichrist, Satan, has always been trying to duplicate that which is of God, replicate that which is of God, make himself, uh, this man is, this Antichrist is even going to set himself up as God. And so I don't even want to get too much into all of that, um, but... Uh, this vision, um, this dream that was shared with my sister-in-law by the Lord, I believe that is confirmation uh, along with many other uh, visions and dreams that people have been having that are right in accordance with the Lord's coming. So I would just end with this, friends, that you know, may we be found by Him during this time, whether He comes soon or whether He comes in the late hours of the night, metaphorically speaking, whether He's delayed. Let us get oil during this time. May we take this quarantine time and this unleavened uh, bread, you know, time to consecrate ourselves anew, to seek the Lord and to be filled by His Spirit. Okay? May we take this time to renew our consecration, to renew our commitment unto Jesus Christ. Okay? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirits. We love you guys. Blessings from Jeremy and Katie. Amen. So wipe the tears away.